Now we're ready to go over data entry in DonorQuest. And what we're going to do now is cover this left-hand side of the toolbar. Each of these icons to the left represents one of the data entry windows in DonorQuest. And what we're going to do is start to the far left with the file cabinet icon. That will open up your main data window. So if you click on that icon once with the left mouse button, we will have the data entry windows open up. And one nice thing about DonorQuest is that it is a relational database, so you can see more than one in piece of information about your donors at one time. So, for example, if I scroll through the names here up above, the information below will change to reflect the donor's name that's highlighted above. And the view we have here is called a spreadsheet view. It looks similar to an Excel spreadsheet. And we can't edit or add information in this view. We can only view information. So to edit or add information, we have to use the buttons here to the left. So we're going to click Edit and look at Brad Anderson's form view. And here in the form view is where we can get in and make changes if we need to. So the form view is organized into tabs, and the first tab that opens up is the primary tab, and this is just biographical information about the primary donor on this account. And there's a couple checkboxes on this screen. There's an inactive checkbox. Um, this is for donors who haven't given, say, in the past five years. You can mark them inactive and exclude them from mailings. And also there's a bad address checkbox. It works in a similar fashion. So if you're getting mail back from donors, uh, as undeliverable from the post office, you can mark their record bad address and exclude them from mailings. Okay, to here to the right we have telephone and email information and this email button is something uh, we've added to the program and if you click this it should open up your Microsoft Outlook and paste this email address into the to block. And it al is also compatible with other email programs but the default is Microsoft Outlook. Okay, we'll go over to the additional info tab, and this is just more biographical information about the primary donor in this account. We have some profile codes here in the lower left. We recommend you use these for any fundraising interest the donor might have. And then up here in the upper right, we have some information that's tracked automatically by DonorQuest. When the donor was added, when the donor was last modified, and by whom. The secondary tab contains information for a spouse or significant other and we have a create as a new record button down here so if this couple ever begins to give separately you can actually um, take the information here on the secondary tab and um, have it copied into a brand new donor account okay the constituency tab is a very important tab um, it contains your mailing salutations the Citation 1 we recommend to use for formal citations, uh, what, how you would address the donor on the first line of an envelope or label, and then Citation 2 is an informal citation for the body of a letter. And Citation 3 is an extra citation. Some schools that use the program will put the child's name there. Uh, below that we have some more checkboxes. There's a do not solicit checkbox. So again, if you have donors that do not want to be contacted, you can check this box. And again, later when we get into mailings, you can exclude them f uh, from future mailings. Rank Code and Club are for membership uh, information or membership tracking. So if you do have a membership program, you can use these fields to uh, rank your donors. Over here to the right we have some list codes and this is where you'll store all the various lists within your organization. Um, your committees, your board member list, your employee list, and so on and so forth. And any of these fields in DonorQuest with this drop down arrow are coded fields. And of course the ones you see here are just samples that we sent out with the program. But w if you were to purchase the program of course you'd be able to create all your own codes. Okay, the totals tab just has some quick glance totals for this donor. Over to the left we have the past four years of giving for the donor. And over to the right, we have some more donation in total informa totals information and also some counts for the various records within their uh, or entries within their record. Okay, then we have a chart tab, and this just shows you the past 10 years of giving here on the left. And to the right, we have a pie graph which shows you the campaigns the stoner has given the most to. And if you need to print this off, you can use this print button here in the upper right. Okay, that's pretty much it for the main information view. I do want to show you really quickly how to build custom fields into DonorQuest. It's very simple. Um, all you have to do is click on the word configure here at the top of the screen and then choose set up user defined fields. And say for example you're having an event that is coming up and you need to store the seat numbers for that event. 
So to add a field for a seat number, you just click the Add button, and you'll just simply name your field. And we're going to change the type to numeric. And we're going to change the, well, we can leave the width 15, but the decimals will switch to zero. And then the formatting will leave unformatted because it's not a dollar amount. So we're going to click OK. And then click OK again, and we'll get a message that says the uh, update is successful. So we click OK. Now if we open up our main data windows again by clicking on the file cabinet, and then click edit again on the first owner we'll see there's a new tab down here at the end user one and there is the new field and this will be available not only in this donor's record but every donor's record as well as it will also be available in reporting and selections okay so that's it for the main information uh, portion of the program the icon here to the far left this file cabinet so now we're going to move on to donations and the donations window is already open it's right here below the main information and we're just going to take a look at the first donation here for Brad Anderson so again we have to use the buttons to the left I'm going to click edit and to go over the fields really quickly here you have a date for the donation date the amount is the amount of the donation the Type is the form of payment. And you can also track two types of non monetary gifts within DonorQuest 2. Uh, account is the actual account that the money is going to be deposited into. The stimulus is the campaign code. The fund is what the money is to be used for. The TY letter is which thank you letter this donor is going to receive for this gift. And if you don't want the donor to receive a letter, you can create a code for, you know, no thank you letter or you can also just leave this field blank the ty value is the tax deductible amount of this gift and you'll use this field for example uh, if you have a donor that receives something in return for the gift uh, you'll deduct that uh, value from the total amount of their donation so say for example the donor gave or received a coffee mug in return for this gift um, valued at ten dollars well then his actual tax deductible uh, gift would be or donation would be nine thousand nine hundred ninety dollars okay the comment is any sort of miscellaneous comments you want to add about the donation and the check number and check date fields are there for storing that information we also um, have space for a credit card number and credit card expiration date if you um, store that information Okay, down below we have two more fields. There's pledge to credit and give soft credit to. Uh, we're going to get into pledges uh, next, but if this donation was going towards a pledge, towards paying off a pledge, you would click the browse button here and choose the pledge that this donation is going towards. And soft credit is a fundraising term. Um, basically, if a donor or organization was instrumental in helping to bring this gift in, you can um, give soft credit to that person and there are reports built into donor quest which can track which donors or organizations within your database are helping to bring in the most money so if for example Thomas Baker was the person who helped bring this gift in you would just highlight his name and click select okay so that's it for donations we're ready to move on to pledges which is the handshake icon on the toolbar so I'm gonna click on that next